uh, joints in the body, the shoulder has a tremendous range of motion. Uh, the price that we pay for this amazing wide range of motion is that the shoulder can be very, very unstable and it relies again, just like the knee, but even more so than the knee, it relies extremely heavily on the capsule as well as the ligaments to maintain the humeral head in the socket, uh, the glenoid. Anytime we examine the shoulder, we need to always remember that there could be problems coming from the neck as well as from the chest area. For example, uh, the lung could be relating or heart could be relating to the uh, shoulder. We'll divide the examination of the shoulder into six uh, uh, categories. First is inspection, number two, range of motion, three, palpation, four, muscle testing, five, special tests that look at uh, uh, impingement syndrome type problems, rotator cuff type problems, and number six, looking for stability examinations. First part of uh, the examination is looking for inspection. We're looking for atrophy in the muscles and we want to compare one side versus the other. So we're looking basically for symmetry uh, of the muscle groups uh, between uh, one shoulder and the other, not only from looking at the patient uh, from the front, but also by looking posteriorly. We also want to look for any uh, evidence of ecchymosis, if there's been any uh, kind of bleeding around the shoulder, whether uh, from a major collarbone fracture or a proximal humerus fracture, uh, there can be significant uh, bruising uh, across this area. We also look for any swelling across the, across the chromioclavicular joint uh, uh, area from AC joint uh, separations. Just realize that the distal clavicle and AC joint uh, uh, anatomy can vary widely among different patients, however, that's why you always need to compare side to side of the chromoclavicular joint. The clavicle is, again, the most prominent thing that we can see uh, in the shoulder. Um, the sternoclavicular joint in this region, the, the chromioclavicular joint here. The coracoid process is something that is palpated at uh, this area here, uh, basically at the mid portion to the lateral portion aspect of the clavicle, inferiorly about one to two finger breadths, and the coracoid process is the is the uh, area of insertion of the short head of the uh, biceps tendon as well as the coracobrachialis. The acromion is the lateral aspect most of the scapula. The, uh, the next thing, the next major muscle uh, that we would look for in the shoulder is the pectoralis major muscle and the pec major muscle is a triangular muscle that originates from the sternum, the ribs, as well as the clavicle and it comes into a tendon that uh, inserts onto the lateral aspect of the in intertubercular groove on the humerus. The other muscle uh, we usually look at uh, is the deltoid muscle. And again, the deltoid is also a triangular muscle. It's formed of an anterior segment, a lateral segment, and a posterior segment, and inserts onto the, uh, it inserts onto the deltoid uh, tubercle onto the humerus. The deltoid is what gives us our rounded appearance uh, to the uh, shoulder. The subacromial bursa, although we cannot see it, it is usually just anterior to the acromion below the deltoid and usually that is an area that can be brought into play by extending the shoulder and pushing in front of the acromion uh, in this region. And of course the biceps uh, muscle. When inspecting the shoulder from the posterior aspect, again we're looking at the trapezius muscle. We're also looking and palpating the area of the scapular spine. And the scapular spine is a good landmark for us because it allows us to divide up the uh, supraspinatus fossa and the infraspinatus fossa. And this fossa is the uh, supraspinatus uh, tendon, uh, which is part of the rotator cuff, which is usually uh, torn in rotator cuff injuries. And of course, along the inferior fossa, we have the teres minor and the infraspinatus uh, muscle. The other major muscle group that we look for uh, with inspecting the shoulder 
is the rhomboid uh, muscles, uh, which can be inflamed uh, in uh, uh, fibromyalgic type uh, pain. The trapezius is innervated by cranial nerve uh, 11, or the spinal accessory uh, nerve, and uh, again, it's a very rare injury. However, if it does occur, the patient would be unable to shrug the shoulders, such as that. Okay. All right. Patients would have, have problems with the shoulder drooping significantly on that side if uh, they lost uh, the strength in their uh, trapezius. In regards to the rhomboids, that allows, to re that allows the patient to retract the uh, scapula uh, in this area. Okay. Right. Good, uh, Next we will be looking at winging of the scapula by looking at the serratus anterior uh, muscle and which is innervated by the uh, long thoracic uh, nerve. Okay. Again, uh, whenever we're evaluating if there's any, uh, any uh, winging of the scapula, we would ask the patient to uh, perform a modified push-up off of the wall. Again, looking for any asymmetry between the two uh, scapulas. Again, which would relate to the uh, serratus uh, anterior being non-functional due to injury to long thoracic 